Hi, today we're gonna to be talking about reference images. There are two methods I've used. I'm, I'm leaning towards one of them and I'm gonna talk about why I, I'm choosing that one. And I'll talk about both and some of the pros and cons. The first method is, I believe, just kind of the more straightforward method of coming up to the background icon up here. You open that menu and you wanna you want check the box for reference image. If you used a reference image before, it'll automatically pull the last one that you used in. Um, if you haven't used one or you want to just change it, you can just tap here underneath reference image and then hit import. And then you can use photos or files to bring in an image. The controls that you have are scale. You can change the positioning, X and Y, uh, and the opacity. I don't really use overlay or rotation much. So let's just say that's fine right there. Uh, what this is good for, so what I have here is considered a model sheet that gives you a couple of angles, like top, front, side. If you're using a model sheet like this, then you kind of want to maximize your space. So you might want to come in here and just try to get as much as you can. I'm underlapping some of my toolbars, but not with the important information. I don't have any of my actual art underlapping. Um, if you're using this to just if you're bringing a photo of a character just as reference, you're not going to actually align geometry to that image. Then this is also a good method, but you would probably want to scale it really far down and move it to like the bottom, bottom left or right. And that would give you more area, blank space to work with. And then you can just look down, you know, at your reference image. But for our case, I'm going to reset this to the center and I'm going to try to maximize it because when I'm aligning, I want to, you know, I want to be as zoomed in as possible. So this is sort of a hard surface model. I'm going to bring in a box. I'm going to come up to the scene menu right here, hit add, hit box. I'm going to color this a bright green. And that's just to give me some, some contrast between the um, geometry and the background image. You can also, since I reset, I didn't really bring down the opacity. I like it a little lower. Okay. Uh, with the box selected, I'm going to come up to my material menu and I'm going to set the material mode to blending. And this will give me access to, I'm just going to move my box over. This will give me access to the opacity slider. This way I can see through my geometry to the background image. Here you can just decide what works for you. And if you look over here at our view, currently set to front, I'm going to tap and hold, and that's going to lock that view. And now I'm going to pinch and zoom my box. I'm actually going to unlock that because I'm not perfectly front. Okay, there we are. So now what I want to do is I want to move and try to align my, I'm pinching and zooming just to rough it in here. And then I will use my invalidated controls here to be more. So I can't really zoom in unless I go back into my menu. Kind of want to, but we'll just rough it in here. So there's the front. And what I want to do now is come up to my camera, hit add view. I want to hit the pencil icon. And we're going to type in front. And now I have that say, I'm going to unlock my, my view cube up here. I'm going to just rotate it to the top and tap top, I'm going to tap and hold and lock it. And I'm going to pinch and zoom again just to get the width right for the top. And we're going to use, we're going to use the gizmo or not the gizmo, but the invalidated controls to adjust the depth here. And that looks fine. I'm going to come up to my camera again, hit add view again, hit the pencil icon. We're going to call this top, top. And now you can see here in our like camera controls, I can tap between front and top. And then we can do that again for the side view. So I'll just unlock our view and let's go to the left. I'm going to lock it on the left. And now we should already be the right size. I just have to pinch and zoom, get it centered as best I can. And that's good enough. Camera, add view, pencil icon, and left. Okay. So now I can toggle using these controls between front, top, and side. And that's how you would set up cameras, which even if you unlock your, your view and you start messing and moving into a more perspective view, you can still tap and they'll automatically reset. So that's why it's important to have cameras set up so that you can quickly check your, how your modeling is going from all angles. I alluded to some of it that I, what I don't like is I can't zoom in. Like if I had, if I wanted to really focus on an area like the control ports um, and really get my alignment, you know, perfect, then I want a more zoomed in view. You can do that here, but you have to set up additional cameras. So I would need to go into my background mode. I need to zoom in 
and then sort of bring my ports into view right here. And now I would need to, I'm adjusting my camera to front, locking it. Now I'd have to align this, I'm pinching and zooming. I would have to align it like this and then add another camera. Add view, call this zoomed front, something like that. And that's how that would have to work. So now you can see as I go through, I'd have a more zoomed in view. Totally fine. You would probably end up with like, you know, six cameras, one uh, zoomed out and one zoomed in for each view. So totally works. Um, I like to kind of move around and zoom in even more than this. As you can see, I maxed out on the scale here. So I can't zoom in any more than this. Cons to this would be zoom level. I can't really get even... You know, I can't get any further than this. Um, I could bring in a larger image maybe, and that could help. But this is not the method that I've, I've stuck with. I've moved on to another one, and I want to show you that one right now. So what I've been doing lately, which is something that's common in other 3D programs like Blender or Cinema 4D, you would bring in planes into your 3D space and actually put images on those planes. And then those, those planes would rotate with you when you move the camera, your geometry and your plane, your reference image planes stay locked in their perspective. So to do that, we need to come up to our scene menu, hit add, choose plane, and I'm gonna just tap the home icon to center this. Uh, I'm gonna turn on my gizmo. I'm gonna come over to snap, make sure it's on set to 90 degrees. If it's not, you can just tap it, type in 90 degrees. I'm gonna grab our red rotation handle and just pull it down. And here we have a front-facing plane. I'm going to lock front view by just tapping and holding. It's happening. There we go. Okay. One uh, caveat here is that you can add a plane or an added image to a square, but if your image isn't square, then you're going to get distorted image. And I can show you what that looks like. So you want to come up here to your material, down to this textures area, check the box. Let's bring in a photo. And let's find, oops, and let's find our photo. It's very distorted. It's trying to take a, a more uh, widescreen ratio image and fit it into a square. So to prevent this, to prevent this, I'm going to go over to the image that I have in my photos. I'm going to go up to the top right, hit the I, the information icon. I'm going to look at my image dimensions here. So it's uh, 2,732 by 1,251. So I just need to remember these. Um, 2732, 2732, and 1251. Okay, let's go back over to Nomad. And I can adjust my plane by coming up to my gizmo settings and tapping on that. I have scale here, but it's currently set to uniform scale, so uncheck uniform scale. And now you have access to the X, Y, and Z fields. We're going to just play with the red and blue fields here. So the first value was 2,732. Uh, if you look at what we have for scale right now, it's a unit of one. So if I were to type in 2,732, that would be 2,732 times the size that it is currently, which would be terrible. So what I'm going to do is tap on the red and type in two and then put a decimal point and then do 732. So we do have 2,372, but I'm just I'm trying to scale this down. So we're going to do 2.732. And then um, Nomad just rounds that to 2.73. For our blue, we had 1.251. It was actually 12, uh, 1,251, but we're going to do the decimal point. So here we have a more usable scale here. And now I can come into my material menu. Open that, come down to textures, tap on that checkbox, and let's find that same image now. And here, now we know that we're in a, you know, we're in the correct proportions. And if you're working and doing very technically precise work, then, you know, at least here you'll have the confidence that you've got a proportional image. So first thing I like to do is I'm going to turn on my wireframe. You're going to see how, um, how much geometry is on here. I like to take this down. So I'm going to tap up here on the gizmo settings. Go to the three dot ellipses menu and then bring your plane topology your division x down to zero and i'll tell you why i do that in just a moment i'm going to uncheck the lock for the view so here you can see we have a 3d plane now the image sitting on it even if you rotate it, it's just 
inverted on the other side. So here we can pinch and zoom and zoom in as much as we want. So huge pros to that already. Um, I'm going to bring in some geometry. I'm going to come up to our scene, hit add, bring in a box. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color it green. I'm also going to come to our material, set it to blending, and lower the opacity. So here is why I turned down the topology on the plane. It's because when I have wireframe on, uh, if I had a very dense mesh for, for this, uh, it's very hectic. It's hard to know where the lines are on the geometry versus the plane. So I just I knock that out completely because I don't need it. Go ahead and turn off wireframe for a moment. Here I can lock to my front camera view. And now when I pinch and zoom, both things are, are in sync. So I can't really use pinch and zoom, but I can use my gizmo. So I'm going to tap on this, switch to my gizmo. And for our front view, I'm just going to align like this. I'm going to switch, turn gizmo off, and go to my invalidated scaling tools. And now I have, so now I can zoom in and be, you know, really precise. This is a very thick border, so precise is, it's not really that precise, but you can see if I did have a very thin, you know, blueprint that I could be really precise by zooming in. So that's our front view. And now if I unlock this, you can see our shape is sitting sort of inside of it. What I want to do is create three planes that have the three different views. So this is our front. I'm going to select our plane, come up to our scene menu. I'm going to hit clone. I'm going to come down to gizmo and I have, I have snap turned on still. So I'm going to grab our blue handle and drag it and we're going to create a side view camera. Oops. I'm going to drag this to the end just outside of our geometry. And now I'm going to go to our left camera view. I'm going to lock it. Okay. So here I need to bring out, bring out the geometry a bit. And I also, I also want the side view, which is down here. So I'm going to bring our side view up a bit and I'm going to move our geometry and I'm going to scale it a bit like this. Okay. And I'll unlock the camera so we can see. So you can see I have, if I tap the view, the view cube up here to the front, because it's snapping, it actually makes, makes this other plane invisible because the plane is, you know, there's no thickness to it. So there's the front. And if I switch to the left, then the other one, just the other plane disappears. So I have those two set up. So I just need one more. So I'm going to tap on this one. I'm going to my scene menu, hit clone one more time. I'm going to hit my gizmo. And this one, I'm going to grab the red, drag it upward. I'm going to put this just below our geometry, somewhere in here. Now I'm going to switch to the top view and lock it. All I have to do with this one now is just align our top with the model. And it's already sized for me. So I've unlocked our, sorry, it's a little crazy. So this is what you'd be working with. And you might say, wow, this is a lot busier than just having the reference image. Um, I find the pros of being able to zoom and maneuver and have those views always locked and at the right angles. Um, because in the other first version, it was always locked to front and your camera views had to were the thing that moved your geometry around. So I like this a lot more. And if you're worried about how busy it feels, um, just remember that you have a solo control down here that you can tap and hide those quickly. Um, another thing I like to do is come up to my scene and then just pick check mark all of my planes hit the add button, come down to group here and then put these in a group. And I like to tap the three dots and hit name and I rename it to reference. Now I have a folder of just those. Um, quick tip here. If you were thinking like I was thinking originally, if I tap the hide unhide for the folder, everything will hide. Nothing hit here. And Nomad has sort of a, I don't think it should work this way, but you have to collapse it. And then if you hide it, it hides everything. But if you have it open and you tap the same icon, it does nothing. So just remember that. Close, collapse your, your folder, then you can hide it. But I find the easiest way is just playing with the solo down here. And that's how I work a lot of times. I'll use my reference, I'll solo it, do some modeling, and then so that is how that one works. And like I said, it hides really you only see one plane at a time when you're using the snap to snap to view. So right here. Top. Yeah, so I think this is the better way for me to work. Uh, but those are the two, two methods that I have for you.
you know, up to you. I mentioned early on that if you're just using the image just for inspiration and you're not aligning geometry to the physical image, then just use the first, use the first method. But that's it. All right. I hope that you found that helpful. Thanks for watching. Keep making things and I'll see you next time.